episode of Neo Reality Collective is brought to you by The Everyday Fan. Check out their content and a passionate group of content creators getting together to create content for the, gro- for the growing community of pop culture, fan base, fandoms, and especially sports such as football, basketball, baseball, professional wrestling, and MMA fantasy sport. Control your content and, se- and se- share your story around the world today. The Neo Reality Entertainment brand expands with a relaunch of the Neo Reality Collective Pop Culture News Talk. Your host, Eric Brown, gives his insights and thoughts in the ever-expanding news world of comic books, professional wrestling, gaming, TV, and movies. Be sure to donate to the brand and keep up to date with additional content on YouTube channels such as Neo Reality Entertainment, NRE The Wrestleverse, and NRE Pop Culture Omniversa. Welcome everyone to Neo Reality Collective. I am your host, Eric Brown of Neo Reality Collective and of Neo Reality Entertainment and all that stuff. We are now at the 63rd episode of of Neo Reality Collective Pop Culture News Talk, and <laughs> I've been meaning to get back into this. Uh, I've been trying to get back into the review space, so I start focusing on that a little bit more, but I'm hoping to get things on track more, but we'll see. First thing to talk about, even though this is heavily focused on Marvel, even though that's been the big thing that was being talked about, we're going to talk about John Wick Chapter 4. It won the weekend box office for franchise best debut. (laughs) Even being out the comic book giants of Shazam. The movies, according to, on IGN, John Wick raked in $73.5 million at the North American box office and over nearly nearing $140 million worldwide. The movie debated in the top slot in all 31 markets it opened at that weekend. The movie's massive opening weekend made history in a couple of notable ways, according to Alice's and Associates. The John Wick franchise is the only ninth series in the last 40 years to reach a record debut in its fourth opening. Fourth outing. Of those nine, John Wick only has four others that have grown in popularity with each new entry. With the Chapter 4 also being the biggest R rated opening weekend since the box office rebounded from the pandemic. So, yeah, they, 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 they're doing pretty well. Opening weekends for each John Wick, 14 million. Chapter 2, 30 million. Chapter 3, 56 million. Chapter 4, 73.5 million on the domestic box office. The movie had a budget of $100 million, meaning its opening week has already surpassed the production cost. Man, we need to keep those marketing con- conglomerates to stop it. So, yeah, they talked about how this commercial design has provided to widespread critical acclaim, while Sazam 2 has not done as well. And, yeah, there, and now Zachary Levy even goes ahead saying John, Dwayne Johnson's uh, politicking kind of wrecked the movie even though that's part of the reason the other reason is because when you announce a reboot of the whole thing and you make the other movies pointless you start to think hey do you think James Gunn should have waited to like after all these movies came out no okay so yeah that could be the reason nah it's not James Gunn's fault it's clearly just Dwayne Johnson's fault Right. Also, on March 27th, um, the Wii U and 3DS eShops have finally closed down after all these years. Yep. So, they announced that that users will still be able to download previously purchased titles, and online play will still be available and supported on those platforms for the time being, but the eShop itself will be essentially shut down, making a ton of great Nintendo games a lot harder to access. So, um... Yeah, that, that, that sucks. Oh man, the history of the 3DS and Wii U. I, I even forgot the Wii U still had their store going. I'm like, I figured the 3DS shop was still going, considering its troubled history and successes afterwards. Uh, but I forgot the Wii U was still quote functioning in terms of uh, having its eShop. Hmm. The more you know. Hmm. 
Meanwhile, Jeremy Rayner, the iconic Hawkeye, uh, let's see, um, remember how he was in a horrendous accident and it was a snowplow in, Nev in Nevada in early January because we had to, it's when his snowplow weighing at over 14,000 pounds ran over him, which was blunt, which led to blunt stress trauma and, and had to go through surgery just shortly afterwards. Well, um, Apparently, he revealed a few weeks after that, uh, 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 Renner revealed that the accident left him with over 30 broken bones. The sheriff's report revealed that Renner was trying to stop a snow removal tractor from sliding and hitting his nephew. His nephew helped Renner until officials arrived, and he was subsequently left to the hospital. That's the thing we just had to learn. But he's in good spirits right now, and it's doing well. He's walk, walk, and he could be seen. And he's also in his in his an update. He's revealed to be using an anti gravity treadmill in order to keep walking. And yeah, so yeah, so yeah. He wrote in the video. Now is the time for my body to rest and recover from my will. Best of luck, Renner. We got this, and hope we'll see you again down the road. There was another story I wanted to mention since this was heavily Marvel-focused, but the reason why I'm not talking about it is because it's horrendous, disturbing, and oh my god, I'm waiting until everything's sentenced, until everything's sorted out before I get my very, very dark opinions on this whole thing, because by god, what the hell? And if you know what I'm talking about when I say Marvel, let's just say... Kang the Conqueror is not going to be conquering anytime soon, and by God, it's disturbing. Like, like what the hell happened, man? But, uh, yeah, I was going to talk about that at one point, but then decided, yeah, it's a too sensitive a topic and the emotions are too raw. So... Yeah, moving on from that, Microsoft has announced that he have put an end to the $1 Xbox Game Pass Ultimate trial. Announcing in, their, in a statement to The Verge, they said this, We have stopped our previous introductory offer for Game Pass Ultimate and PC Game Pass and are elevating different marketing promotions for new members in the future. I got it. So, instead of making $70 games, you instead make a new tier. Got it. Yeah, d d don't you think that would have been a much better idea instead of charging people 70 bucks this year for games? Yeah. Well, there's also, um... <clears throat> this also could be the paving way because because they're testing out these Xbox Game Pass friends and family plan. This will allow subscribers to share a subscription with up to four other fans, friends and family members. And Microsoft began testing the new tier in multiple countries last year. And... Yeah, I, here's the thing. I would have been alright if they just made a new, more expensive tier for Game Pass instead of raising the prices to $70 for some reason with excuses that make no sense when you think about it for more than a second. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, that, that happened. Meanwhile, uh, so Rings of Power, so they're filming season two, and they are very detailed in its detailing because when you're having a department, an entire team, go ahead and show how the wind blows some dust somewhere, you have to wonder what is wrong with Amazon. Well. PETA called. Oh, God, what do they do now? Oh, wait, they're actually fighting for something that makes more sense than, you know, running a vert talking about video game stupidity? Oh, that that's actually su surprising. I'm like, I would be like they're doing their job. Uh, PETA has called on Amazon Studios and the wide world TV production to stop using real animals to film its shows after a horse died on the set of Rings of Power. As reported by Variety, the, um, the animal rights nonprofit organization has said producers who can't avoid exploiting animals should find a new art form to pursue after a horse died of cardiac failure while filming for season two. So I wouldn't say anything about PETA. Like, at least this makes more sense to fight for instead of Mario. 
which doesn't exist in our reality. I like they probably exist in another universe, but that's like a completely different setting and and, and, and uses scientific logic that doesn't really define our universe, but okay. Yeah. And sources from that show have told Variety that more than 30 horses were involved in the filming on the day of the incident as the horse suffered cardiac arrest while standing with around 20 other horses. And yeah, Amazon spokesperson talked about, about the horse dying and the horse was being exercised and the trainer was not in costume and filming had yet to commence. Both the veterinarian and a representative of the American Humane Association were present at the time. The Independent has confirmed that the horse died of cardiac failure. So, uh, yeah. At least PETA's fighting for something more sensible than Mario, Pokemon, Nintendo's mere existence. At least they're fighting for that. I'm like, they still do horrible things, but still. Meanwhile, former Playground Games studio head Gavin Rabin forms new studio. Forza Horizon developer Playground Games' co-founder and former studio head has revealed his new AAA studio, Lighthouse Games. And him and a world team of world-class developers are currently working on an unannounced new IP, but share no details on what it, this will be, if it's even a... Even, or if it's even in the racing genre. Well, if it is, there's a high probability it is, but, um... Yeah, let's see how this new IP works. The growth of the industry, everybody. Meanwhile, Guardians of the Galaxy... Oh, God. James Gunn has announced that the movie is not going to be a second wasted. It's, in fact, going to be... Going to be two hours and 30 or so minutes. 2.5 hours. It's around that long, and I'll, and this is what he said. It's around that long, although that's not yet exact, and I promise not a second is wasted. He continued, there's no fat. It is necessary to experience the full art for every major Guardians character, not only for this film, but for the trilogy, or should I say trilogy plus. Okay. The reason why he mentions the trilogy plus is because uh, how they... How they uh, and people were wondering if he meant, like, there was going to be a fourth movie. There was thinking about it at one point, but, like, then everything changed. And then he went to DC, and now he's the head of DC. But moving on from that, the Trilogy Plus is mainly alluding to the whole holiday special, Infinity War, Endgame, and Thor, Thor uh, Love and Thunder. Set to release on May 5th, 2023, we'll see Peter Quill lead his band of misfits on a mission to defend the universe, again, as they cope with the loss of Mora, Gamora and grapple with the traumas of Rocket's past, also revealing that Rocket is the secret protagonist of the movie, which would be an awesome twist if you didn't give it away, like the advertisements going ahead and teasing Finn was going to be the hero in Star Wars, then it went to Rey, and now people look back on it and think that should have been different at all but that's a completely different topic and I do not want to scream into the void over my issues with Star Wars nowadays and how I don't have a care for the for the nihilistic outlook it is thanks Disney so yeah anyways the developers of Wrestler I'll uh, oh god the developer of the wrestler, aka Grand Theft Horse, a top-down GTA, GTA 2 style parody of Grand Theft Auto set in medieval times, has announced it's a grand new epic project. The Wild West set, Cowboys and Wrestlers. Cowboys and Wrestlers promises a unique friendship between a man and his horse, and adds that you will help find your best friend, a cynical horse named Theodore Rath's his revolutionary novel, full enjoy each other's company while wreaking havoc all around. Eww! And the wrestler follow up that, like its predecessors, he uses the GTA 2 top-down perspective as his foundation, and, and they gave an announcement in along with screenshots. The developers promises you'll be able to rap banks, cheat and poke, and earn money, raise with stagecoach, and try to catch everybody with a lasso, or learn how to use it differently. Yeah! Along with other anchronistic pop culture references. Yeehaw. 
and it's also now available to be wishlisted on Steam, so if you're interested, check it out. Meanwhile, Daredevil Born Again has already begun has revealed the Kingpin actor, Vincent. Uh, he decided to reveal that, um... Yeah, uh, he decided to reveal how they will still have, you know, the big violence and gore and whatnot that Daredevil Netflix was known for. However, he also revealed that season two is already planned out, saying this in an interview with Newsweek. By the second season, there are gigantic, gigantic payoffs in the first season, too. But I can't say much about that, but the fans are going to re really get what they want. It's really quite cool to be doing it. So, yeah. Uh, I still kind of wish the Netflix side was still canon in some way, with, along with the rest of the uh, cast of characters. I'm like, they're bringing back John Berthold oh, to be the Punisher. Yay. And they have been hinting that Jessica Jones is coming back. Though, that does leave a question. They have also said that Foggy Nelson and Karen Page, our actors, are not coming back. And people were naturally pissed about that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> they said that it will be dark, but it probably won't be as gory. Though, this is the Kingpin, so, and he's going to be blind, if anything, from the indication of the comics and the uh, ending of what happened with, with uh, Hawkeye is going to indicate it. Meanwhile, uh, while that is all happening, Brielle Larson reveals her Fast X role, a little bit of a mystery, revealing that Tess is in fact the daughter of Kurt Russell's Mr. Nobody. Uh, going against Radar, she's going to be fighting for the legacy of her father, who is presumed dead after Fast and Furious 9. Oh man, saying Tess is Mr. Nobody's daughter, she's technically agency, but she's kind of a bridge in a way. She doesn't go along with the way hey, that the agency's headed now, that her father isn't there. She believes in the legacy that her father set up, which is standing with Dom, and standing with the Toronto family, and is fighting for it. Family. Dom knows that she has a strong mind and definitely respects that she's gone out of her way to talk to him and wants to build trust. What he asks for test is test. Test, 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 test. Like, if it's an impossible task, she can get it done, and then that's family for laugh. Because family. Saying how her character is a little bit of a mystery, but she goes and how she goes rogue against the agency and edges more towards the family side. But that means she'll have a lot to prove. So, yeah. Chaos! Meanwhile, uh... The Resident Evil 4 remake came out, much to people's critical acclaim and whatnot. However, according to recent data miners, uh, they found in a recent data mine that, uh... Resident Evil 4 Remake could introduce a mode from the original game through DLC saying in a tweet saying thanks to Ghosted from the Resident Evil Week at Discord. They match a day in my Resident Evil Remake and find evidence that the uh, that the Another Order, otherwise known as the Separate Ways, exists in the files. The original Separate Ways starred Ada Wong as players work through the events of Resident Evil 4 from her perspective. The side game is only significantly short is significantly shorter, and taking the place of the over five chapters split across the village, Castle, and Island. Ada also controls slightly different than Leon, which with faster movements and a hook shot. So we could be getting that, along with the upcoming Mercenaries mode on April 7th, which is a free update. Beyond Mercenaries, we haven't heard much besides the bonus Ashley and Leon skins, including in the Deluxe Edition. So it looks like they are going to make some DLC, probably some minor stuff with some updates to it. Could be wrong, though. <laughs> but um, speaking of uh, games that were decades old and being remade, uh, Gran Turismo 4. That game came out in 2005. It is now 2023, and people have just discovered cheat codes that they have never seen before. <laughs> so, 
So these newly uncovered cheat codes provide benefits to the player when the corresponding buttons have been in the input in the game. However, they can only be used once 365 day in-game days have passed in Grand Turismo 4. Saying, earn up 10 million credits in the GT mode screen. Select left, right, right, down, up, up, left, le left, down, up, right, left, down, L1, R1, select. And pass any license, earn a gold ring for any specific license test, earn a gold ring for at, at any event of the course selection screen. Oh man, that, that's a pretty amazing. So, I'm curious as to know how long it takes for 365 days to pass in the game's timeline compared to our real world. Let's hope not a lot. So anyways, uh, remember Multiverses? You know, that free game that came out and everyone was excited Then the content drought happened and you paid money for battle passes and cosmetics and all that insane stuff? Um... Yeah, it turns out that was considered early access and they're closing it down in June with a full release window coming next year. Saying that this is an open beta. Uh, yeah, uh, there's just something problematic with this. Remember how I mentioned there's a lot of monetization in the game? They will not be granted refunds. Boo! Boo! Because they were asked, will refunds be available for previously purchased content? They do not offer refunds. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. So, everyone's kind of pissed. Understandably so. Run. Meanwhile, um, Disney continues to destroy its legacy of its animations by making a live-action version of the Aristocats and a live-action version of Moana. Why do I care? Why should I freaking care? Like, <clears throat> can you just stop? If you want to make live action movies, go and make live action movies. Can they just be new movies? Not remakes that will use tons of CGI to the point that you're convinced that you'll just think it should have just been an animated movie? Like, they bring back the actors who played in Moana, and I'm like, oh, for God's sakes. Meanwhile, Major Company of Heroes 3 update will add in ending cosmetics and time challenges and more. I'm sure that's not going to cause a problem. So, speaking of that, uh, Captain America 4 has had a major acquisition with a from an actor who disappeared 15 years ago. Betty Ross is back. The Hollywood Reporter Hollywood Reporter is reporting that Liv Taylor, who last appeared in 2008's Incredible Hulk, is set to join the Captain America movie New World Order. <laughs> this also follows the news that Harrison Ford will play General Ross, who is her father in the first film, who was played by William Hurt, because going ahead and having just Ross pass away in the universe and then just have him and instead of replacing him because people because I can't picture William Hurt and Harrison Ford looking one the same yeah yeah especially after he came back especially after Incredible Hulk's kind of been forgotten about even though recently in She-Hulk they brought back Abomination and played with uh, Abomination came back, and yeah, Emily Blonsky and Tyler getting a role in Captain America 4, that Marvel's embracing its more awkward history. Along with how She-Hulk happened, and well, we don't like talking about that, I haven't watched it. Ugh, but I still don't get replacing Ross with a new actor since William Hurt passed away. It just feels like it would have been better if you just had 
the Thunderbolts just be more like his legacy impact, like his last like his last stuff he was doing when the when the snap happened, the decimation happened, and it causes all this. But uh, yeah, we'll probably never know what what, what could have been and uh, what they could have done. But I do know one thing: Disney's firing seven thousand employees as part of a strategic realignment. They're cutting back five point five billion dollars in costs. So, yeah, as that had happened, the two, three people came, was confirmed fired. Ike Perlmutter, I'm pretty sure I butchered that, but I don't care considering what I found out about him, was fired from Marvel and Disney, who was the chairman of Marvel Entertainment, and, and along with them came John, T- uh, Tur- I, I can't pronounce it, John and Rob, let's go with that, Rob Steffens. And John, I can't pronounce his name. I think we're both fired from the positions at Marvel and from Disney as a whole. John was the chief counsel for Marvel Entertainment, as well as Rob Steffens, co-president of Marvel Entertainment. All three confirmed by Disney spokespeople via the New York Times. So, but Dan Buckley and Kevin Feige are to remain, and Dan Buckley of Marvel Entertainment will remain a report to Kevin Feige of Marvel Studios rather than Feige and Palmer together. So, yeah, that happened. Also, the Sony tribalists have lost their absolute collective minds, and Sony's probably pissed as well about this report. So, the Japan Fair Trade Commission. The Competition Regular Regulator Board has approved of the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal. After their thorough investigation, it, after its review, concluded that the deal was unlikely to result in substantially restrained competition, and they reviewed it and reached the conclusion the transaction is unlikely to do this, as read by a report by the regulator's body website, reported by Video Game Chronicles. And they said they fell under the safe harbor criteria for vertical business integrations laid out by Japan's Anti-Monopoly Act. And that, accordingly, the JFTC, he has notified the parties that the JFTC will not issue a cease and desist order. So, yeah, they still have some holdouts, including the U.S. Trade Commission, that that the deal will not harm the competition or increase the cost of consumers. Even the UK Competition and Market Authority has softened its stance. However, a final verdict from the CMA, which is viewed as one of the great poten- greatest potential impediments for this competition, isn't due until the end of April. So, yeah, they're still cautious, but it's looking more and more like this is probably the end for uh, the Activision Blizzard era un- as an independent company. And I'm hoping that kept that uh, certain people get fired. Though at the same time, Tom Howard stayed, so that was out of the question. Well, he is set to be getting a golden parachute out of here, so, um, yeah. And to top this first half of the news out, uh, Lionsgate is officially considering John Wick 4 after the success of John Wick 4. John Wick 5, I mean. Sorry about that. So yeah, John Wick 5 is looking like it's going to be a possibility. I mean, like, it would be a miracle if it wasn't, because it'd be a surprise if it wasn't, because that would just be crazy. This is going to be crazy! So, look forward to the violence and sadding war of Keanu Reeves' John Wick as he continues to navigate the criminal underworld. And, you know, you killed my puppy. Prepare to die. My name is John Wick. You've killed my dog. Prepare to die. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that was that was basically the basis of the first movie, but, um, yeah. We'll be back after these messages and ad break. We'll see you all in a little bit. We're back. Let's finish this off. So, um... Yeah, as as that continues to um, deteriorate for for Sony's chances, apparently Sony's uh, behavior towards the sale has become problematic for some Congress members, accusing Sony of anti-competitive tactics against Xbox in Japan. I mean, like they should probably be focusing on other bigger, important stuff like the end of the world. 
the debt, anything. But yeah, two letters came out where both parties, both Republican and Democrats have been representing themselves to go against the against the uh, issue going on with the whole um, anti-competitive nature of Sony, saying today we'd like to bring you to our attention the imbalanced Japanese video game market, which we are concerned may be a result of discriminatory pra- trade practices that could violate the spirit of the US, Japan, and digital trade agreement. The statement noted that Microsoft had retained an, el- an eligible 2 percent share of the high-end console market since it began selling in 2002 in Japan. The lawmakers suggest that a 20-year failure to make end roads resulted in part from Sony's strategy of systematically negotiating to make popular third-party games, PlayStation exclusives, and paying to keep content off Microsoft consoles. Our understanding that is that the Japanese government tolerates a range of exclusionary conduct by their domestic companies that may violate Japan's antitrust laws, and that this inaction by the Japanese government harms the ability of the U.S. companies to create competition to compete in the country. According to a second letter signed by the members of the state of Washington, which happens to play host to Microsoft's headquarters, such practices could undermine the U.S.-Japan trade agreement. The agreement commits Japan to providing a non-discriminatory treatment of U.S. digital projects, such as console games. So, yeah. They've asked the U.S. trade to seek consultation with Japan to address the issue and to identify additional barriers posed to American companies in ex- accessing the Japanese gaming market. Well, you just need to buy Square Enix or Capcom and you'll be good. Hopefully. Yeah. So, that has happened and the Sony fanboys have lost their minds over this. Meanwhile, Steam has announced that they won't support Windows 7 and 8 Steam on after 2024, starting on January 20, January 1st, 2024. Afterwards, the Steam Cloud won't run on those versions of Windows anymore. Damn. Uh, yeah, and they make up a tiny fraction according to the February 2023 Steam Hardware and Software Survey. So, yeah. Screw the small percentage. Meanwhile, Jason Momoa reveals that he thinks that Aquaman will be involved in the new DCU, and yeah, I I like how he likes to say about how how Aquaman will continue to be part of this. I'm thinking, is he? (laughs) Uh, yeah. So, he'll always be Aquaman, but he wants to play other characters too, which will be confusing. And if... And I like how his language seems to imply that Aquaman would still be around, but he never said he'll still be Aquaman. Well, it could change. Anything is possible. Meanwhile, uh, producer Kurt Joe Heyman tweeted and then deleted the news that season 12 of Curb Your Enthusiasm will be the, apparently the f- show's final season. And as I told my mom this, she immediately lashed out at me because she loves that show. Because I'm here to curb the enthusiasm. Meanwhile, House of the Dragon. <laughs> House of the Dragon, everybody. We all loved this first season. Ten episodes of pure politicking and conflicts and conspiracies and a whole lot of Targaryen incest because the Targaryens are fucked. Well, they announced that se- well, it's been revealed according to Deadline, the second season is going to be eight episodes long. That's two shorter than season one. So apparently, why is it shorter? According to the reports, it looked like it, as though a 10-episode season 2 story arc was originally on the cards, but those plans eventually changed, leading to the rewrites. An HBO so- spokesperson confirmed that season 2 will only be 8 episodes, emphasizing that the change is largely story-driven. HBO is apparently already considering greenlighting the third season, though, with the show originally planned to run for four to five seasons in total. Deadline said House of the Dragon showrunner Ryan Condal, along with original author George R. R. Martin, Grim, took a step back while season two was being put together and wanted to take a big picture approach to the rest of the show, instead of working on overall narrative flow as well as to one future feature key bouts and events. As a part of this, season three has already been mapped out and is considered now considering moving forward with it already, taking a long-term approach rather than moving from season to season. Of course, since House of the Dragon has a built-in audience, it's kind of a guarantee. Whether or not season three will feature more episodes remains to be seen, but it looks as though we can expect slightly linear format this time around. 
So, yeah, that's cool. All for the politicking of the Game of Thrones of House of the Dragon. Let's just hope it ends better than the last one. I'm like, we already know how it's going to end if we read the book. Whereas Game of Thrones didn't have the final book because it was still being written. And it still is, technically. Oh, by the way, uh, speaking of things that hopefully will go over well, The Last of Us Part 1 on PC has been horribly slammed on it for its performances. And I've seen the images, it's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. I'm like... I saw it. And I was just stunned at how bad it was. My disappointment continues to rise. Also, Thomas Crunch, aka Sandman, is probably coming to return, saying in an interview with the Di with Dis Insider, say we had a whole story involving his daughter for No Way Home, and it just ended up cut. There was much going on on Amy and Kevin Feige, and we all had a lot of conversations. I would say that conversation has been had a bit of a possibility of Sandman coming into a future iteration of it. Uh, Church reiterated that the conversation has happened about him coming back, and in the future of appearance could see the character boast a more fulfilling story. So, does that mean we'll see him again in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or the... Sp Spider-Man's universe, and more specifically, the return of the long-awaited hopeful dream that is Spider-Man 4 that never got to be. <sighs> Toby Maguire does say he wants to come back and do Spider-Man 4. They even go ahead, went ahead and were being elusive with how about the whole post-Spider-Man 3 era and, well, they try to be vague as possible enough to make sure they can still make a Spider-Man 4 hopefully one day down the road. Probably you should just do a limited series on Disney Plus, most likely. Meanwhile, Resident Evil 4 Remake has sold 3 million units in two days. Congratulations. It's almost like being a good company is better than being a horrendous DLC hoarding person. Remember those days, everyone, from Capcom? Meanwhile, Hor Horizon Forbidden West Expansion's impressive cloud tech is a big reason for its PS5 exclusivity. Yeah, senior community manager wrote on the PlayStation blog that developers upgraded the cloud system so that the game's open wide clouds, open world cloudscape would look more realistic, but only as much as the PS5 can handle. So, if you buy Horizon for Ben West on PS4, well, Sony just told you, screw you. Great. Meanwhile, Marvel series Wonder Man finds his Grim Reaper. So, an actor from the the former Fear the Walking Dead actor ha is going to be Wonder Man's brother, Eric Williams. Um, I would try to say his name, but it's hard to pronounce it. I kept thinking gross for some reason because that's what, because G-R-O-S-S-E, and I keep thinking the E is silent, but I could be wrong. So, yeah. This whole thing, he even hinted at this at a Patreon post about his inclusion of the upcoming show. And we're going to have Wonder Man. Wonder Man! Meanwhile, the Thunderbolts have found its writer in Beast Lee Sung Jin. During an interview, Jin revealed well, that he will be rewriting the Thunderbolt script based on the first draft. Jin will also be teaming up once again with beef director Jake Schreier, as well as show's co-star Steven Yeun, who will appear in Thunderbolts. Talking about how the squad is back together again. Cool. Oh, and because John Wick, Keanu Reeves wants to go ahead and be so breathtaking, uh, Keanu Reeves decided to be a comedian and give all the stunt actors t-shirts with their movie death count on them. Yeah! And... For some of that number was above 20. Uh, 
Yeah. That, that's a thing we just have to accept now, huh? Meanwhile, Seth Rogen would be excited to do voice Donkey Kong again after the Super Mario Brothers movie. And there are rumors of a spinoff since sequels already being in the works, so that's a possibility. Plus, there's even said to be a post credit scene. Dun, dun, dun. Are they going to cross over with Sonic now? I'm like, that's not out of the question at this point. Anything's possible. Meanwhile, Crusader's Kings 3 Royal Core DLC comes to consoles in May. The critically acclaimed DLC is coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S on May 17th. A major expansion adding several elements including Throne Room, Grand Yard, an inventory system, and more. The Throne Room is available to the King and Emperor characters as a visual representation of the Royal Court that reflects their success. The Royal Court can be approved upon with Ranger features that let players bling up their residence to attract better guests and impress rivals. Similarly, inspired people such as talented artists, craftspeople, and thinkers can work on new projects, adding further treasures and art artifacts. The World Court update also adds hybrid creatures, cultural di divergence, and more that result in the expense of being praised upon by critics. So, look forward to that on consoles coming in May. So, remember how E3's been kind of struggling? Well, after a series of multiple, uh, um... People leaving, like Nintendo, Xbox, Ubisoft, Sony, Nintendo left. Uh, well, that was guaranteed. Uh, Ubisoft left, and a whole bunch of other companies decided to call out. Uh, E3 has now been canceled. And the ESA issued the following public statement for comments in case Global VP of Gaming saying this was a difficult decision because of all the effort and our partners were made to in order to make this event happen, but we had to do what's right for the industry and what's right for E3. Yeah, I get the feeling we're gonna probably uh that uh this is probably the end of E3, isn't it? Probably, yeah. But let's cut to the final chapters in this saga. So, this is one of the big highlights I've wanted to talk about. Jonathan Hickman. Ah, uh, yes, Jonathan Hickman. The most insane writer I have ever seen on comics and has done grand reimaginings and revamps and transforming stuff such as the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, Secret Warriors, S.H.I.E.L.D., and recently X-Men. He's also coming back to restart the Ultimate Invasion, Ultimate Universe with Ultimate Invasion because, of course, he is with Brian Hitch. But, um... There is something I wanted to mention. <laughs> when Ultimate Invasion was announced, I first heard, didn't hear about Hickman yet. I heard, oh god, the, the Ultimate Universe is coming back. The cannibalism, the incest, everyone being a jerk for some strange reason because comic book edginess and probably bad artwork uh, are coming back. Oh god, I can't believe this. This is terrible. Why well, bring this back? It had a good ending, a leap for the most part, with Secret Wars 2015. Hickman went out with a bang with it. I mean, what could you possibly do to make this successful? How could you convince me to spend five bucks to go five to six dollars, probably more, just to read four issues of Ultimate Invasion that features the return and looking like Miles Morales is going to go back to the Ultimate Universe and Jonathan Hickman's running it? God damn it, I'm going to have to pay money for this. Yep, my ever-loving torture with Marvel continues because when Hickman's name is on it, I am immediately forced to buy it. Damn it. Yeah, Hickman coming to write this was the unexpected part because he has been teasing another project since last year with Valio Skeety, who has been known for their work on, let's see, uh, Sword Volume 2 by Al Ewing, uh, Empire, Judgment Day, all those great stuff. So there's this tease about what happens when the pa when the powers that be meet the natural order of things, and dramatically hinting at a massive conflict that will reshape the moral fabric of reality. But my God, well, it's finally been unveiled. 
an original, daring, magnificent mythology of the Marvel Universe. We get our first look at Hickman and Ski's highly anticipated mystery project that was described as the Sandman of the Marvel Universe. Gods. My god. Hickman's writing about himself. I knew it. Okay, that last part was a joke, but let's figure out. People were making that joke online probably already. So yeah. We had a teaser trailer where we see Dr. Stephen Strange talking to someone named Wynn, and with Wynn being given a special book that have no substance whatsoever because we don't know its name yet, but uh, it has a red eye, so I'm pretty sure it's bad. And he asks Dr. Strange a question. Are you good, Stephen Strange? And then Stephen Strange answers in poetic nonsense saying, I fight for the light. That is who I am. And then he said, nice, but you didn't really answer the question, did you? I am good. And you win? Are you good? Or are you evil? Steven, my boy, who can tell the difference anymore? And we got the title G-O-D-S. They have periods at the end, so the, this is apparently a, a, an acronym. Gods. And my response to this was to, to Stephen Strange is like, but Hickman already wrote you in New Avengers. You asked Wong if you were a good man, and he said you're not. So, um, case closed. You're just lying now. I'm like, you're reforming the Illuminati because that worked out so well the last time to take on the Maker. So, yeah. Ren is now apparently a mysterious player in a war that exists outside the orders we know of, and a vital member of the Eon's old hierarchy that includes the omnipotent rulers of the universe such as Eternity, Infinity, and the Living Tribunal. I am curious as to know how, where they've been. Like, I know Eternity was last, I think Eternity was last seen back in the Marvel Civil War II event that we would all like to forget. The Living Tribunal was killed right before Secret Wars because the Beyonders are assholes. And Infinity, I have no idea. But, um, that was the last time I saw them personally. I don't know where they, I don't know if they showed up between now, between then and now. They could have, and I just didn't know. But, uh, yeah, they're here. And after a faithful meeting with Doctor Strange, Rin hints that something bi even bigger than the forces of good and evil, with a very building blocks of creation scheme and class, is the beginning of a breathtaking epic at the crossroads of science and magic, one that will shatter our understanding and open our eyes to the ideas beyond all that we perceive. Hickman even went and had an interview and, and explained this. When I came back to Marvel a few years ago, I wrote two series Bibles, the first of which was House of X, the others was Gods. To say that I'm excited to finally be able to share the story with everyone is a massive understatement. God takes place in his own special core in the, in, in the Marvel Universe, in the cracks that lie in the intersection of science and magic, and revisits some characters and concepts that we reimagine for a more continuity-driven audience. Skinny also added, When I was given the chance to work with Hickman on this new project, I accepted right away. Then I discovered that we would be reimagining gods in the Marvel Universe, how they work, what they do, and how they interact with each other in humanity. It's kind of a project that makes you weak in the knees when you think about it. Our colleague Jonathan has the gift to make even the most complex stories surprisingly simple and understandable. Uh, that requires like 10,000 data pages, dude. His pitch inspired me almost immediately. The core of the story is so perfect and clear that it swept, me, swept away my anxiety and turned into a burst of creativity. Hickman then added, I've had the pleasure of working with Valerio Skeedy on this for the last year, and watching him bring to life this has been a total joy. Gods is my favorite kind of Marvel comic, one that feels like something old but pushes the Marvel Universe in a new, exciting direction. Valerio also then continued saying, The thing I love most is how the story grows, starting on the streets of New York, and then taking the characters and the readers on an incredible journey with the Marvel Pantheon. We will bring you new places, show you what was hidden through the wrinkles of reality, introduce new characters, put a fresh spin on old ones. You think you knew the Marvel Universe? Well, we will prove you wrong. And <laughs> when you go ahead and tease that this is... The Sandman of the Marvel Universe. Check out Linkara's recent retrospective he started. But, uh, yeah. You know you have to b deliver on this. 
So we'll get a preview of this on the May 6th with a special preview and free comic book day Avengers X-Men number one. And in the coming months, they will reveal more about the main cover reveal along with variant covers, backup stories, and more. Man, this is going to be a sweeping epic that could change our fundamental aspects of all things about life. My God. If only we could get something even bigger than that. So anyways, we're going to get the fall of X. Revealed at MegaCon 2023. So, at MegaCon Orlando, fans got a fresh insight to the X-Men's upcoming new era, Fall of X. Senior editor Jordan D. White was joined by a trio of acclaimed X-Men talent, Gary Yuggin, Benjamin Percy, and artist Joshua Carsa, to chat about the series and the new stories and shakeups of this next chapter. Since 2019's revolutionary House of X and Powers of Ten series, mutant kind has experienced the imperial growth and prosperity of the island nation Krakoa. But can it really last forever? It all begins in July's shocking X-Men Hellfire Gala number one, One Shot, where danger, conspiracy, and sacrifice threatens to shatter everything mutant kind accomplished on Krakoa. So, this was teased with the haunting images by Brian Hitch featuring all the X-Men and mutants dead. Oh, uh, sure, I'm pretty sure Fall of Mutants did what I like to say something. Along with that, we also on the side got a slew of titles named X Men, Immortal X Men, Astonishing Iceman, Wolverine, Children of the Vault, Invincible Iron Man, Dark X Men, Uncanny Avengers, Realm of X, X Men Red, Alpha Flight, X Force, Uncanny Spider Man. August 2023. So, Uncanny um, Avengers was announced, and it will be written by Gary Duggan and, and drawn by Javier Garian. The new lineup will consist of Captain America, Steve Rogers, Rogue, Deadpool, Quicksilver, Psylocke, and Penance. The new powerhouse team must solve the mystery of the new murderous Captain Krakoa and establish army killers from igniting the fires of a new world war. I'm sure that is not going to cause trauma for anyone. And... Yeah, it's not like promising. At least we now know where Steve Rogers will be since the main Avengers title will be not featuring his Captain America, but Sam Wilson's. Meanwhile, in X-Men issue 25, Duggan will continue to write X-Men throughout the fall of X. Following the Hellfire Gala, the title will see a cast shake up with new additions such as the winner of the, the year's X-Men fan vote and Kate Pride. And she returns through their darkest hour as Shadowcat. And we see her slice through face through killing a orchid soldier with swords going through his head without actually all the blood and violence. Also, K Pry will also be uh, transforming her look again because having the pirate outfit was clearly over over overzealous. Meanwhile, X Force will also continue with Benjamin Percy's run, and which will feature. Colossus leaving the new team, leading the leading the X Force, featuring this time. Uh, let's see, Deadpool. Okay, that's expected. Domino, Omega Red. Oh, and and Wolverine number two from all new Wolverine. I'm trying to get a vibe of who the other guy is. Let me double check. Okay, yeah, I can't find it. Also, Wolverine and Ghost Rider collide in Weapons of Vengeance Alpha number one, and in Wolverine issue. Issue 36, all written by Jeff Benjamin Percy and art by Jeff Saw. So, yeah. Logan's going to be on a collision course with Ghost Rider with artist Jeff Saw. Percy will bring his, both his Go Wolverine and Ghost Rider runs together in a four part epic, ex revealing that a demonic serial killer is murdering innocent mutants. But what is it about this deadly new fo foe that forces our two heroes to team up? What buried secret does he share with Wolverine and Go Ghost Rider never before seen very first meeting in the past? The roster kicks off with Ghost Rider, Wolverine, Alpha, the Weapons of Vengeance. Before unfolding in the pages of issue 17 of Ghost Rider, Wolverine 36, and coming to the fire conclusion in Weapons of Vengeance Omega. And along with that, Iron Man is joining on the force with Gary Duggan. With Iron Man now developing a stealth suit. I'm kind of curious how that took so long. 
with fire long you can control Stark Unlimited and using its resources to build Stark Sentinels because we need to see, keep killing mutants, Tony Stark has proposed a new alliance with Anna Frost and he will play a key role during the fall of X. And his latest solo title impacts mutant kind's new status quo in surprising ways. Okay, so this is the kind of thing I like. Remember how back then the X-Men and mutants were pretty much on their corner during the lost decade as Hickman called it? Well, we're getting something a little bit different. Instead of having just all these series just involve, you know, uh, involve just the the uh, mutants and that's it. We're instead getting everybody in the Marvel corners of the universe. We're getting the Avengers. We're getting Iron Man. We're getting Spider-Man, apparently, because I'm hoping they're not turning him into a mutant. At least the Kamala Khan would make more sense because she was originally supposed to be a mutant in the comics, but because they were trying to phase out the mutants with the humans, they changed it. They could probably change it again, probably down the road, but we'll see. Also, in the promotional posters, we see Rasputin coming along. Yay, Rasputin is coming in. Yay, Rasputin 4 from Powers of 10 and Sins of Sinister. So that's going to be exciting. Really, I'm excited for this new series. And I like how it's actually starting to affect the entire corners of the Marvel Universe, all corners of the Marvel Universe, instead of just being focused and relegated to the mutants. Like, that's, that's the exciting thing about this. So, we'll see you all again on that. And, my God. Oh, man. This was a fun episode. I have been wanting to get back into this. And when Fall of X and Jonathan Hickman's project came out, I was like, I got to talk about this. So, I'm excited as all of you for this kind of stuff. Uh... I'm looking forward to seeing you all again next time. This was your host, Eric Brown, Neo Reality Entertainment of Neo Reality Collective, the host. And I'll see you all again next time. Peace and take care. Check out my other content. Stay tuned for the ad break. And I'd like to thank the Everyday Fans for sponsoring this episode. And I'll see you all again next time. Take care. Have a good day. Stay tuned for this ad break and outro. Be sure to donate to the brand and keep up to date with additional content on YouTube channels, such as Neo Reality Entertainment, NRE The Wrestleverse, and NRE Pop Culture Omniversa.